gave him the clear okay sign and to go home and said they was felt he was in good condition and just needed some blood pressure medicine adjustment and uh, he's tonight at home resting uh, so we'll remember him jim mcclintock down in the health park uh, south that certainly is in need of our prayers and then noel wade in manatee memorial sister edna Garrow's um, daughter and she needs our prayers sister pat de tour tonight needs our prayers uh pat's uh, in agony within some sort of uh, something we could, we're not doctors we can't diagnose it but it seems to be in her skin and in her perhaps the blood work in her body she's very miserable tonight and uh, we want to pray for sister pat sure the lord will help her and uh, there's others as well and i'm sure there are many others but these are ones that stands out uh, and um, really stands out in the assembly and we're going to pray for them and of course we'll pray for all the others that may be sick may be afflicted in any manner in any uh, word brother howard we're glad to have him uh, tonight from uh, Sebring, uh, his wife, uh, Sister Janet, is in um, Sebring Hospital, is it? Brother, what hospital is she in? Florida Hospital. Florida Hospital. That's over in, um, that's over in uh, Sebring, or is that in Avon Park over that way? Anyhow, uh, she's in the hospital tonight. His wife is in the hospital and has... Um, an infection coming from neuropathy in her feet and having to deal with a bone, a bone structure in her feet. She needs our prayers tonight. Yeah. Uh, Sister Jane, yeah. let's remember her yeah. and ask the Lord uh, to help her. Yeah. We're glad to have yeah. Brother Howard. He drove over help. from Loretta, that's about 90 miles over there tonight, to be in church with us. Yeah. We're so thankful for that. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Brother Milo. So we want to remember these that are around us tonight, all right? Yeah, Brother Steve. Brother Steve. And Brother Marlow. Yes, sir. That lady that called, that Mary, uh, Una, I told you about. Yes. She is dying. She didn't tell me what she's dying from, but she wanted the church to have prayer for her. Just one of the listeners in Stockton, on the YouTube. Stockton, California. In Stockton, California. She called in and asked the church to pray. She's dying. She didn't state from what, but that's a dread thought to know you're dying. And um, what would you do tonight if you knew you were dying? Would you carry out your plans that you're now carrying out? Would you, would you, would you go ahead and do what you're going to do in life that you're seeking to do right now? Would you keep the same pace of, of being in worship and praying and reading the scriptures? If you knew you were dying i don't think so i think people tend to cry out and get closer to god yes. when they know that their time is short yes. when they know they're coming to a close yes. uh, that they yes. seek the lord how wonderful it would be yes. if even though we didn't know that our last days were coming yes. our last hours were coming yes that we could just forsake all yes. other things oh. And get close to God and get in as many Bible studies and worship and prayer meetings as you could possibly get in. Draw nigh to God and let him draw nigh to you. Amen. How wonderful it would be if we didn't know, uh, as we don't know, the majority of us tonight, the day or the hour appointed for us. Uh, but we're going to pray for this dear sister in Stockton. Uh, California, that the Lord will help her. All right, praise Mama, God. Sister Eustat for a model. Sister Eustat? Yes. All right, we miss her tonight. In the service, we sure do. There's a family here in town, a Whaley family. They lost their son last night to a drug overdose. He's 28 years old. Pray for the family. Oh my, that's a terrible moment, isn't it, that families learn uh, their child is gone from an overdose. All right, the Whaley family here in our city. All right, another any other requests for prayer? Anime. All 
right, Sister Adamay? My son had a very bad urinary tract infection. Yes, we prayed for him. Yes. Uh, but Sister Adamay, would you tell him? And I'm, I'm very straight. Uh, I'm, if you notice, I'm straighter about things than I was a few years ago in the pulpit. Because the time is short. Right. And I can go ahead and coddle people and, and let them believe they're going to heaven, they're going to see God, uh, and, and be under that illusion. Uh, and not obey God, and not do His will, and not serve the Lord, and not forsake all and follow Him. Uh, I'll be held accountable because I must give an account. The scripture tells me that I must give an account of those that hear me minister and hear the words I preach. And so if I cream it up and I butter it up and I, I tell you something you want to hear and I tickle your spirit, and I coddle you as children in a nursery, I'll be held accountable. Amen. Uh, so I'm going to say this to you, Sister Adame, and you tell Lorenzo, if he wants to be healed of that illness in his body, tell him to come to the house of God. Amen. Get on that van with you and come and be here yes. in the house of God. Amen. And let us pray for him over and over again until victory comes. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible said the law and the prophets were until John, and since that time, every man present, the kingdom of God is preached in every man. Every man present his way into it. Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind. That's the problem now with a lot of God's people. They're remembering where they came from. They're remembering what they did yesterday. They're remembering where they were uh, five years ago, three years ago. Uh, but we're to forget those things that are behind. Yes. If God moved you, if God brought you, if God taught you, if God spoke to you, if God led you, you're to forget the things that are behind. Yes. And looking uh, forward under those things that are before, reaching forward under those things that are before. Uh, to, to know Jesus and to have him yeah. as Lord and Master of our life. This one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind yeah. and reaching forth into those things that are before. That's, that's what we must do to serve the Lord in the hour that we're living now. Praise our God. So we're going to pray for Lorenzo. We're going to pray for the rest of God's family. Uh, we're going to pray for all of God's children. Pray for those that are working tonight. Uh, all right, Brother Jordan. I got a, a doctor's appointment on the 29th on Thursday, so I need prayer. All right, let's pray much for uh, that request and uh, ask God to help Jordan. Why don't we just join together in one mind, one accord? Yes. That's what they did on the day of the upper room. Yes. Sir. That's what they did on the day of Pentecost. Yes. Amen. I, I, if they did it on the day of Pentecost, I think we can do it here tonight. Hallelujah. There's about the same number here tonight, about 120, as there was in the upper room. Uh, why don't we just join our minds together, our forces together, our hearts together, and pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Continue to remember Sister Diane's son here, Richard, and the others that are sick and afflicted. So I'm going to ask you to join me right now, and let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, elders. Come on, saints. Come on, elders. Lift your voice. Come on, saints. Rise up with me. Many of you, rise up with me out there. Praise the name of the Lord. Rise up. Praise our God. Let's pray and stir ourselves for the Lord. Lord, we come before you tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray in the name of Jesus. That we seek you in the name of Jesus. We cry out in the name of Jesus. We call holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood. In the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, to look upon these cases and these needs and these sorrows and these families that are weeping from the overdose 
Lord, and for the man dying, and, and we pray for those in California, this dear sister in Stockton, whatever the reason is, that her life is draining away, and she's dying tonight. Oh God, would you reverse it, and would you heal her, and would you give her a healing, and prolong her life, and give her years to study the Word of God, and to seek your will, and we pray, oh God, uh, for Sister Patty to her tonight, that the agony would leave her body, and we pray for Brother Various, uh, we pray for Brother Mike and Honey, and we pray for Janice over in the hospital, Florida Hospital, and we pray for Howard, and we pray for the families uh, that are working tonight. Oh, all the needs of your people. And if there some, be some that are weary and tired and worn, oh God, uplift them, encourage them, cheer them up, give them courage, give us desire uh, for getting the things that are behind and reaching forth unto the things that are before we press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, Lord, come into the saints. Let the saints rejoice tonight. Let the saints be lifted up. Let the saints that are here be encouraged. And let us all be reminded there is a glorious church coming, and we're part of that tonight. We are part of the remnant. We are part of the body. We're part of the whole. And we praise you for the vision of the coming Christ and the glory of the world to come and the greatness of God in the world tonight. We give you the praise and we give you the glory in the name of Jesus. 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 Name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Oh, tonight, Lord. We worship you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name. 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 Now, Lord, uplift the church with whatever you give us tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord and praise the Lord. And we're glad that you're here with us tonight. Thank you, Lord. Be seated. I'm so happy all of you are here. Wonderful group of people out on a Wednesday night. And I have praised God for that zeal, that desire that you have. Uh, there will be an elders meeting, elders, Saturday morning, 8 o'clock our last meeting of the year and in the church dining room and uh, we'll meet you there at 8 o'clock for study and for prayer and for uh, hearing the word and fellowshipping one another as elders of the church and um, we want to give you encouragement tonight as a pastor I want to encourage you encourage you to look past anything and everything that you may be encountering in your life tonight, look past that. Look past that problem, that experience. Look past the rude people. Look past the people that are not courteous. Look past the people that are not concerned. Look past uh, the people that have no zeal about their life. Look past about those who frown rather than smile. Look past those that have lost their desire and their hope and seemingly by their manifestation, uh, if they haven't, their manifestation shows that something is going on, that something is not at a high level in their life. Uh, but look past that in order for you to be encouraged. I gave a lesson here uh, Monday night. Many of you were not here to hear it. And I'd like to just uh, rerun it just for a moment. Uh, I won't cover the entire lesson because that lesson covered nearly two hours. Uh, but I took the 25th chapter of Jeremiah, and the Lord gave it to me, and I thought it was very essential uh, for the church. And um, I hope tonight that something good comes from it for you uh, for a few moments here. 
of the study of the Word of God. Uh, in Jeremiah, uh, the 25th chapter, uh, we see where uh, God dealt with Jeremiah. And remember that Jeremiah uh, prophesied uh, 200 years before uh, in his lifetime. The 25th chapter of Jeremiah is uh, uh, 200 years before all of this happening. Uh, he prophesied, and uh, he prophesied 200 years. He saw into the future 200 years uh, before this ever came to pass. That's recorded in the ninth verse and the tenth verse of the book of Jeremiah. You see, if God's people would once again have respect for the ministry, uh, someone said people have lost their respect for authority and government and elders and uh, grown-ups and parents in this country and teachers and police officers. That's true. That's true. This country has done that. But they've also lost it for men of the Word of God that are in authority over the church. Their word doesn't count. Uh, when I grew up in the church, if my pastor said one time, don't do that. He didn't have to say it the second time. If he warned me about something the first time, he didn't have to argue with me. He didn't have to debate with me. He didn't have to come back the second time and tell me, I said, do that. I was under the strict authority of a man of God. I was blessed last night in the bilingual service when uh, one of the young coming ministers that's going to guide the church in days to come. This young man has a gift in his life and God's going to use him in the ministry and he's, he's empowered with the word of God. He has a fire in his soul and he's only been in the church a short time. He's only just a young man and he came here from Cuba not knowing anything about the Lord, anything about the Word of God. He told me, he said, Brother Marlowe, in Cuba, we worship devils. We worship devils in Cuba. And he said, when I came here, he said, I didn't know what you all were talking about. I didn't know anything. But he said, strangely, God began to break me down quickly and fill me with the Holy Ghost. And I didn't know what was happening. But everything you said started making sense. Yes. I wanted to come back to church. Yes. I wanted to be in the church. Yes. I wanted to hear the word of God. Yes. Now this is a young man that was in Cuba and uh, just came. And he said, now, and he stood last night right over here and he said, I'm telling all of you that God gave me a vision that I am to listen to this man and everything that he says and everything that he tells me and never detour from what he tells me to do. He said, God told me to lose my will and lose my mind and turn it over to this man, this, this man of God. Give him, give, give him my mind. And if he says, go that way, go that way. If he corrects me, receive it. If he tells me not to do that, not to do that. He said, because God showed me that I came to this country to be changed completely from the person I was. Praise the name of the Lord. And this young man is in his 20s. He's not even out of his 20s. He's a young man. Never knew the Bible. Never knew the Word of God. You know what that does for me? Yeah. That gives me hope yeah. Yeah. that God can take a young man yeah. or a young woman yeah. or he can take an older man yeah. or an older woman yeah. and tell them to be obedient yeah. and to sit under the word of God yeah. and not to rebel and not to uh, back talk and not to uh, come back at the man of God, yeah. but to listen to him, be subject to him because they can be saved and their life can be saved uh, if they'll listen. I, I, I was encouraged by that. Uh, God, God let me be encouraged. 
because here's a young man that came here from Cuba that in a short time he is willing to forsake everything. Yes. And he got home from work Give late last night and came into church with his work clothes on and said, the Lord has told me that if I will be obedient to this man and hear the words as a prophet of God. See, many people don't have that spirit. They don't have that attitude. I'll take it if I want to take it. I'll listen if I want to. I'll receive it if I want to. It's optional. I can take it or leave it. Uh, just because he said it doesn't mean I have to live by it or obey it or do it. Well, I said all that to say this. That's the condition that Jeremiah the prophet showed Israel they would be in 200 years later from the time that Jeremiah lived. And he showed what would happen when Israel became in that state, when they became in that condition. And he showed them what would happen to them and what they would lose and how they would lose out when they backslid away from hearing the priesthood, listening to the word of God, listening to the law of God, being obedient, coming and assembling and being faithful because it's necessary that you be in church, yes. that you hear the word of God. Yes. Somebody said, I'll be saved regardless. I'll decide whether I want to be in church or I'm not in church, whether I'll hear or I'll not hear. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. You're kidding yourself. You, you can't be saved unless you're near and with some assembly where a man of God will teach you week by week, day by day, and prophets will prophesy, and the word of God will go forth, and the anointing of the Lord will be in that church, and the glory of the Lord will be in that camp. Yes. You Amen. can't be saved That's right. because you're violating the scriptures. You're violating the word of God. You can kid yourself. A lot of people kid themselves. They, they daydream in religion. They daydream in the body of Christ. They daydream. They believe they can be saved with a little dab will do you. I'll get this little bit. That's as much as I want. I don't, I'll choose whether I want any more or not. I don't have to have any more. After all, God loves me. How do you know God loves you? Come on, brother. How do you know God loves me? Well, loves me whether I'm right or wrong. Does he? Uh, that's a wrong statement. Amen. In the church, God loves me whether I'm right or wrong. I don't believe he loves me when I'm wrong. Amen. I believe he, loves, he lifts his love from me until I become right. If I'm doing wrong, is God loving me in that wrong? Is God loving me with a wrong spirit? No. Is God loving me with a wrong attitude? No. Is God loving me because I decided he loves me, no. whether I'm right or wrong? No. I just decided God loves me. He loves me anyhow. Doesn't matter if I'm right or I'm wrong. God loves me. That's a statement that we make, but God isn't in that. And someone must tell us, no, God doesn't love you when you're doing wrong. He withholds his love. He watches you. He'll try to correct you. He'll try to find ways and means to turn you around where he can love you because uh, he loved you when you were wrong in sin. But when he brought you from sin and gave you the Holy Ghost and gave you the word of God, and set you under a ministry, he's not going to keep on loving you, keep on being wrong. He loved you when you were wrong in the world because you didn't know right. But when he brought you in to know right, he won't keep on loving you or me when I keep on doing wrong. God will withhold uh, his love. I believe God loves a humble spirit. I don't believe God loves a proud spirit. I don't believe God loves a stiff neck. I don't believe God loves an arrogant man. I don't believe God loves an arrogant woman. I believe God loves humble people, broken people, people that can cry, people that can ask forgiveness, people that can be tender and sweet, uh, the proud, the arrogant, the holy. God doesn't love that. In fact, the scripture tells us he hates that. Uh, Proverbs, the sixth chapter, verse 16, 6, 16. These six things does the Lord hate? Does the Lord hate? What is the first one? A proud look. 
a proud look. Yes. And there, uh, see, uh, 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 God doesn't love that in me or in you, and I have to fight that because my flesh would be proud, and your flesh would be proud. But look, in the 20th chapter of Jeremiah, uh, the Lord gave me this Monday night, and I'll just touch it tonight, uh, but uh, I wanted to do a little rerun on it because it was so precious. In verse 9, uh, God said through the prophet, and this is 200 years before this judgment comes into Israel, Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and a hissing and perpetual desolation. Now, verse 10 is very important. When God destroys, God takes. When God starts whittling me down, when God takes away from me because of my spirit, my attitude, my proudness, my haughtiness, my deception, my lying, my cheating, my stealing, my fornication, my adultery, um, uh, my sin of the flesh, my flesh, when God takes uh, uh, that uh, and destroys that, he takes something away from us. And when God destroyed Israel 200 years later, when he brought Nebuchadnezzar and all the north against that land, when God did that, the scripture said in verse 10, I will take from them. What does God take from a Holy Ghost child? What does God take from an Israelite when uh, he begins to destroy them? What does God take from a church when that church will no longer heed the line, walk the line, be faithful, be giving, be forgiving, be loving, keep a vision? that buoys their soul up, lets them be uh, children of the king, walking with him with a purpose, a destiny, a mission. What does God take uh, from uh, his children when they no longer are like that? When Israel became backslidden, what did God take from them? When the church is backslidden, in part, a third, a quarter, a half, uh, the church doesn't backslide all at once, the church doesn't backslide 100%. It starts with a percentage. Sometimes it's 5%. Sometimes it's 10 Sometimes that church will keep on in that condition until it becomes half the church, until it becomes a third of the church. Yeah. Uh, because that, that leaven, that leprosy is in the camp. And that leprosy keeps eating away. Yes. The, the leprosy, the disease leprosy, uh, there's only one leprosorium in the United States right now, and that's in uh, Carville, Louisiana. And there they have lepers. And uh, the leper colony there is missing fingers and parts of their ears and parts of their nose. And um, because leprosy eats your flesh away. Uh, leprosy consumes your flesh. It's a flesh-eating disease, and it will take uh, parts of your body from you because it's leprosy. Well, the sin, that, that's why that God likens sin to leprosy because leprosy will remove parts of your spiritual life from you. It may take one part or another, but leprosy or sin will take you farther than you want to go. Amen. And the first thing you know, there's a part of you missing. There's a part of your nose that used to smell what was right, what was wrong. Discern what was right, what was wrong. It's gone. You can't discern good from evil. Yes. You can't tell when you're doing better, doing good. You can't tell when you're disobedient or you're obedient because you can't smell Amen. any longer. One of those senses is gone. Um, leprosy or sin or proudness or backsliding takes away from you sometimes a finger. Uh, one of the instruments of the members of the body. And you don't have that finger. And you can't grip anymore. You can't, uh, this finger went missing tonight. 
I'd have a more difficult time. I take that thumb away, and I'm going to have a real difficult time getting that Bible up because there's a member missing. And when you can no longer can enjoy the Word of God, when you no longer can praise God, no longer have a sensitive feeling about you to rejoice when you need to have a dream from God that's spiritual. Love God. Live by His law.